There are many different browsers out there, and I've used basically all of them. If you've watched my channel for any amount of time, you know that I, I change browsers a lot, and like way more than I definitely should. Now, I've been using the same browser for quite a while now, but prior to that, I was switching back and forth between different browsers quite often. But today, what I want to do is actually take a look at a new browser, or I'm going to, I'm going to quote a new browser from the makers of Malvad. Now, Malvad, if you don't know what that is, is a VPN provider. Now, I have my own thoughts on VPN providers. I think Malvad's probably the best out of all of them that I've found. It's the one that I've used for a while. Uh, but still, VPNs do require some trust. Whether or not they're even worthwhile using is up for debate by a lot of people. So we're not going to get into the whole VPN thing all that much in this video. But the browser itself, which is made by Mulvad, and in collaboration with the Tor project, is somewhat interesting at least. So we're going to take a look at the Mulvad browser today and answer the question, is it worth using? And if so, who's it actually for? So... Let's go ahead and jump in. But before we do, if you'd leave a like on this video, I'd really appreciate it. It really does help the channel. So the Malvad browser looks like this. Now, if you're saying, Matt, that looks an awful lot like Firefox. Well, you weren't wrong. That is exactly what this is. This is, in fact, a fork of Firefox. Now, when I say it's a fork of Firefox, I mean that quite literally is that they forked Firefox, but that's not unusual because that's what Tor is as well. Tor is actually a fork of Firefox that they've used to develop their own software on top of and to meet their own goals. Mulvad has basically done the same thing. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm actually happy that they've done that because for the vast majority of browsers out there, it's a fork of Chromium, which is a Google project, and we all know that Google is the devil. Well, wait a minute. Is Red Hat the devil? I'm not sure. Maybe we have two devils. They're all devils. I don't know what the whole situation when it comes to the devil is, but uh, just need, needless to say that obviously Google is bad and we should not use Google things. That's the way they've been told, telling me anyways. So the fact that they've forked Firefox is a good thing because Mozilla is not bad. Uh, I don't know. I'm very confused. Who's bad? But the point is, is that Firefox is open source and that they forked it. And that's what this is. Now, what's the whole point of Malvad Browser? Well, the idea here is to be a browser that is as privacy focused as possible without sacrificing functionality. So if you've used things like LibreWolf or IceCat or Waterfox, I think is another one of those browsers. Those are all also forks of Firefox, but they all take privacy so seriously that a lot of times it does impede functionality. So it means that there are certain things that just don't work. A lot of times DRM stuff doesn't work. A lot of times certain websites won't load simply because they've hardened Firefox or their browser so much that certain things just don't function. So Mulved is trying, at least from what I've read, to kind of thread the needle between those two extremes, being able to be usable but still very privacy focused. Now, what have they done to actually meet that goal? So first of all, Let's talk about the whole Tor stuff. Now, I am not an expert when it comes to Tor. I've only used it a few times and all of that stuff mostly recently. So I'm still very much a noob when it comes to Tor. And I would not even be able to claim that I understand how it works. Okay, so I'm, I, I will freely admit that right off the bat. But this browser actually has very little to do with Tor anyway. So my lack of knowledge is not going to be... A bad thing. So what do I mean by it doesn't have very much to do with Tor? Well, it was developed in a collaboration with Tor, but it does not actually have anything to do with the Tor network. Instead, what they've done is taken some of the privacy things that Tor has done inside of its browser and brought them to Mulvad. So they've basically just stolen some of the features. Uh, well, I'm not saying, excuse me, I shouldn't use the word stolen. They've borrowed some of the features from the Tor browser that don't have anything to do with actual Tor stuff. So the Onion Network, none of that stuff is actually here. If you are wanting stuff that has to do with Tor, or if you want to use the Tor network, you're going to have to use the Tor browser. So for the most part, we can ignore the whole Tor aspect of this project simply because there's not much Tor actually here. What they've done, as I said, is taking some of the features from the Tor browser to make their their the Malvad browser more privacy focused. So what are those things? 
It does some of the more default security settings that you would do if you were trying to make Firefox itself more private. So, for example, it doesn't remember history or cookies at the end of the session. So every time you close the browser, it's going to delete all your cookies. It's going to delete your history. So those are like the bare minimum that you would do if you're trying to make your browser more secure. Specifically, the cookies is important because cookies are like the most obvious thing people that companies and websites use to track you. So by deleting them and making your browser fresh every time it starts up, it's one less thing that they can track right now. This does prevent a problem. So if you're logged into YouTube and you're, you like to stay logged into YouTube or whatever, if you log out of this browser and come back, you'd then have to log in again. Now, that's not a huge deal. You can obviously change that in settings if you want to. But that's something that you're going to have to keep in mind. You're going to have to log into your stuff all the time. That is a problem that is with a lot of privacy respecting browsers. And that's just kind of a inconvenience that, that you have to work through. Another option that they've given you that isn't something that is available in Firefox is something called Identity Reset. I think that's what it's called here. And basically what it allows you to do is without having to close the browser on your own, it basically allows you to completely reset the browser so that whatever you were doing beforehand and whatever you're doing afterward, whatever you do afterwards aren't linked in any ways. So the idea here is that if you're wanting to prevent yourself being tracked between different topics or whatever you could do sort of or between different sites so if you're browsing facebook for stuff and you, you click on a link or whatever that's going to save a cookie and normally when you browse and you have a cookie on your system that cookie follows you from one website to another it's one of the reasons why if you ever sign into google and then visit like a medium blog it actually shows you hey would you like to sign in with your google account this is your google account like how the hell does medium know what my google account is well that's a cookie right uh, and there are many different obviously examples of a cookie by having the ability to reset your identity it will erase those cookies without you having to completely close the browser and launch it right back up so that's one option that they've added now I'm not exactly sure how useful that would be in everyday use, but it is an option there if you need it. Okay, so the biggest area where they seem to focus on is fingerprint resistance. So by default, they've enabled a setting within Firefox called privacy.resistfingerprinting. And basically what this does is it changes several different features that will at least in theory prevent your browser from being fingerprinted now if you're not aware what fingerprinting is basically what that is and this is very non-technical surface level explanation but basically the idea here is that websites can take very minuscule non-specific aspects of your browser information so you know your your operating system the resolution things like that they can take all these little pieces of information and that's going to help them identify exactly who you are and uh, the things that you're interested in so as you go out throughout the web it's not only going to keep putting cookies on your system it's to so that it can track you through cookies we're also going to be able to associate those cookies and your ip address with specific information like your operating system your resolution and stuff like that and the more information they have the more accurately they can identify you hence the word fingerprinting right the, the whole idea is that it's kind of like a fingerprint on the web uh, by turning on the setting well that has tried to make that much more difficult so the the setting basically changes your time zone so that it's utc and now what that means is that by putting everybody who uses this browser in the same time zone it's much harder to separate out individuals inside of that group uh, it removes access to the system fonts, which again can be used to identify uh, basic systems. So probably all the fonts that you have on your system are exactly one set of fonts. And what I have installed on my system may be unique compared to what you have installed on your system. And by usually browsers have access to all of that information. On Mulved, they only have access to certain small portions of that information. Another thing that they've done is they've dictated window size. So if you go to something like verge.com, you're going to see some really weird borders. Now, I don't know if you really notice them because you don't notice them until you actually see them. Once you see them, you can't stop seeing them. So if you see these like borders, like they're like gray bars here along the side. Basically, what they've done is made it so that every single person who visits a website using this browser is using close to the same resolution so that the 
pool of resolutions is exactly one, right? And they've taken 200 pixels. I think that's what they said was 200 pixels. I uh, might be less than that. I can't, can't remember. I didn't write it down. I should have written it down. The, but the, they basically made it so that there's a border along the sides so the and, and the bottom so that the resolution is as samey as possible. And that means that the, the websites that are trying to track you don't have access to your exact resolution, which, again, makes it harder to fingerprint you. They've also generalized the OS and uh, app version numbers so that all the browsers look exactly the same, even if you're using different versions of it. And same thing if you're using, like, uh, every, every, basically, we just say you, you're using Linux. So everybody who's using Linux is in the exact same pool of data instead of have, saying, yeah, I use OpenSUSE or that person uses Ubuntu. And they're in their own separate pools, which makes it easier for them to identify. They've also made it so that the webcam and microphone capabilities are masked. So if you have a webcam and you have a microphone, regular browsers know that those things are connected to your system and then can ask you for permission to use them. With Malvad browser, it won't even know that you have them installed or uh, hooked up unless you give it permission to do so. Uh, another thing that is masked is the keyboard layout, so that it doesn't, it can't tell what keyboard layout that you're using. The less information they have, obviously, the harder it is to fingerprint you. Also, they've masked the uh, per performance APIs, gamepads, and I wrote it down as seasons, but I'm pretty sure I meant sessions. So the all that that extra information regarding your uh, attached hardware and stuff is completely anonymized as much as possible. So they've done quite a bit of work here to make sure that fingerprinting is, is as hard as possible. It does not mean that it is impossible to do. It just makes it harder to do because they're, they're basically what they're trying to do here is put as many people in the same pool of data as possible so that my browsing experience looks exactly the same as someone else's browsing experience to the people who are trying to track us. By having us all in the same pool, it makes it much harder to spot one person in the crowd. Okay, so that's what their basic idea here is. And to add on to the benefit, they've built in Molvad so you can use a VPN on top of that, which would then again make it harder for you to be tracked because it won't be using your regular IP address. So the way that it does this is by using the Molvad browser extension, which I'd show you, but it actually shows my actual IP address, so I won't be doing that. <laughs> the, the extension itself is fairly explanatory. You do have to pay for Malvad in order to use it. There is no free tier with Malvad. You could, if you wanted to, replace the Malvad extension with something like ProtonVPN, which, which does have a free tier, so you could just kind of pop Malvad out and put something else in if you wanted to. I do use Malvad. I just don't have it hooked up right now. But the idea here is that you can have the VPN going on built right into the browser if you don't want to use the VPN system wide. Now, the last few things that they've done are things that you probably should do in Firefox anyways. They've disabled the normal Firefox telemetry. So by default, Firefox collects an enormous amount of information about you. I don't know if you know this, but they actually have built-in telemetry inside of Firefox. And just like the whole Fedora thing that's, that's going on right now and the Ubuntu things before, people were freaking the hell out about Firefox actually collecting your data. Uh, it did not seem to affect them any because they went and did it anyways. And that is definitely opt out. It is turned on by default. Uh, so the Mulvad guys have turned off all of that telemetry. They've also turned off all the things that Firefox suggests for, to you. So things like ex suggested extensions, things like extent the suggested search engine, third-party recommendations, all that stuff has been turned off. Any of the services that Firefox usually puts on and enables by default that phones home, they've turned off. They've actually on their blog listed exactly the number of things that do provide connections outside of the browser. So they still have browser updates set up browser, the, the Malvad browser extension, which is the VPN part, uh, the Malvad DOH, NoScript uBlock Origin, which is installed by default, so there's an ad blocker up here, the certificates for SSL and stuff like that, the domains update, and, and another thing for the US the, the uBlock Origin. Now, those are the only things that they have that set, are set up to go outside of the browser itself. And honestly, for me personally, the thing that I like most about this is how transparent they are about everything that they've done. I really do this. I'll link to this blog post here at the, that, I, that I have on screen. They've basically laid out every single thing that I've talked about here in terms of what they've uh, disabled, what they've enabled, and, everything, and you know the settings and the 
connections and stuff that are going out. Basically, everything is right here in this one blog post, and they're very transparent about it, which I find very nice. Right, a lot of times, like we we have no clue what Firefox is doing behind the scenes, and the, that idea that Malvad is here at least trying to attempt to be a little bit more transparent is is very nice. Now, the question that we then have to ask is, who is it for, and is it good? Right, is it good? So the the question, the answer to who is it for? Well, I mean, it's kind of for everybody. But there is a proviso on that, right? So the benefits to having all the stuff enabled that Malvad disables, so if you were just to use regular Firefox, the benefits to using something like regular Firefox it are apparent. So you stay signed into everything that you sign into because it does remember that because it uses cookies, right? Now you can change that obviously inside of Malvad because this is just Firefox. It has all those settings, but there are certain conveniences that you get by using a non-privacy respecting browser. There's no, there's a reason why why Chrome and Firefox and Edge and, and all those are very popular because they work very very well. There's also a reason why privacy respecting browsers like Malvad Browser, like Waterfox and LibreWolf and stuff like that aren't very popular because they do put in place hardships for people who want to use the internet. There are roadblocks there and things that make your internet usage inconvenient at times. So people don't like inconvenience. So while I say that Mulvad is for everyone, it is more for people who are much more interested in privacy than they are in convenience. Now, personally, I think that that should be most people, but it's definitely not. So if you are someone who really truly cares about your privacy and you want to use a very privacy focused web browser, Mulvad is a definitely an option for you. Now, the question you have to then ask is, do you trust Malvad? And that's a much harder question to answer. Now, personally, I think that they're one of the most trustworthy VPN providers out there. That being said, I can't really say that there's a reason why I trust them more than I trust any other one. They do seem to be more open and transparent than the vast majority of the other VPNs out there, but again, they are a company, so you kind of have to keep that in mind. You are putting placing your trust in someone else when it comes to using something like this, or if you choose to use their VPN or whatever. So that is just something to keep in mind. If you're really interested in pr protecting your privacy and you want to use a privacy-respecting browser, maybe LibreWolf, maybe I Waterfox might be better options for you because those are truly open source. Not, not to say that this is not truly open source, but they're not. Those other options are community-backed instead of backed by a company, So if that makes sense. So... I'm not saying don't use Malvad browser. From what I see that it's, it's a very good browser and they seem to have very good intentions for it. It's just if you choose to, you need to keep in mind that it is run by a company and you have to have some trust inside of them in order to be happy using it. So the, the last question then is, is, is it better than Firefox? And the answer to that question kind of goes with the previous question in that it can be better than Firefox if it is what you're looking for. So if you're looking for a privacy respecting browser, it's a better option than Firefox because Firefox, while it can do every single thing that Mulvad can do, every single thing Mulvad can do, Firefox can do because they're all just Firefox settings. You would have to go and make make those settings. You have to you'd have to turn on fingerprinting. You'd have to turn all the options that go along with anti fingerprinting. You'd have to turn on, off all of the telemetry and stuff. Mulvad has done that for you. So if you're looking for all of those settings to be off, if you're looking for a hardened version of Firefox, Malvad may be a good option, and it may in fact be better than Firefox. If instead you're not looking for those things, you know you're going to have to you get more convenience and stuff like that using Firefox itself. So in that case, Firefox then would be better. So it really does kind of depends on what you're looking for inside of a browser. For me personally, I would probably trust LibreWolf bet more than Malvad, but it's still kind of close, and I would say that the the integrated VPN, the identity reset are both things that are really nice to have. So I would definitely say give it a try if you're interested in a privacy respecting uh, browser. I would also say don't put too much weight into the whole Tor aspect of it because Tor really doesn't have anything to do with Malbad browser outside of the collaboration to create it. The Tor network is not here. If you want to use Tor, 
you'll have to go use the Tor browser. So that is it for this video. If you have thoughts on the Mulvad browser, you can leave those in the comment section below. If you haven't already, if you'd leave a like on this video, I'd really appreciate it. It really does help the channel. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. Links for PayPal and YouTube will be in the video description as well if you'd rather support me there. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now so thank you very very much for your support i truly do appreciate it you guys are just thank you so very much thanks everybody for watching i'll see you next time